Hello, everyone. Stephanie Apple here, and I'm going to continue exploring my new Dorothy stencils from Joggles by Elizabeth St. Hilaire. The first one is Dor- Di- Dorothy Dynamo, and the second one is Halftone Dorothy. And I'm going to experiment with three different yellows. The first one is Luminous Yellow. And each of these yellows picks up a little bit orange, I would say. So they're kind of a nice in-between yellow and orange. It's almost a macaroni look as I roll it out. And then I also am going to add in golden mica flakes for texture. These are the small golden mica flakes. And the reason I always use so much texture on my gel prints is because they always eventually turn out to become... Uh, greeting card backgrounds. Um, I guess sometimes I'll turn them into art journals, but for the most part, I am making greeting cards with all of my gel prints. And so when I cut them down to greeting card size, I really like the texture that goes along with the uh, mica flakes or any of the other types of paints and acrylics and mediums that I use that add texture. So on that first stencil, the half tone Dorothy, a lot of paint comes through. So really want to press it down. And when you pick it up, you can see just how bright that luminous yellow is. It's almost like a neon. And then after I lift the stencil, I'll go ahead and press another piece of my mixed media paper that I'm using. You could tell that mixed media paper already had paint on it, some white background with probably pearlescent in it. Um, Just have a handful of those always stacked up to the side when I start printing. I don't really know how to pronounce this other yellow. um, So I'll put a link to it in the notes. um, And I'll, you know, give you the spelling and you tell me if you can figure out how to pronounce it. But um, I just wanted to mix it up and see how each of these different yellows look, especially when I add in the gold mica. I really like using yellows in the fall on backgrounds for leaves and other types of foliage, but I thought it would be fun to see how they do with this polka dot pattern too. So that is the second yellow and we'll lift it up for the big reveal to see how different it looks from the first one. And again, just wanting to make sure that I pick up as much paint as possible before I lift up the paper. Okay. So again, a little bit more orange on that one, not quite as neon and I like the look. Then I'll pick up the rest of the paint that's down on the gel plate. And using the Red Baron can help smooth out the paper. And that's a nice look. I like it. But it's definitely macaroni up here. I'm getting hungry. All right, Marigold is the third version of yellow that I'll use for this experiment. And I still have some mica flake on my brayer. It really kind of stuck to my brayer. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't get the best coverage this time around with it. So um, I think probably if I mixed with a more fluid acrylic paint, that would have gotten better mixture across the rest of the plate. But I'm using heavy body acrylic today. I almost always use heavy body acrylic. I just like it. I like the texture that it gives and the thickness on top of the paper when I'm making layers. So just really pushing it down and making sure I can pick up all that paint. And there's the marigold. It's really not that different of a color and um, but let's see what it looks like when I pick up more of that paint and see kind of a comparison that first luminous yellow was definitely the most neon and this is your more I think marigold picks up quite a bit more yellow and then the other version of yellow that cannot be named is more orange and so now that I've done this I want to add in some black I have a bunch of stamps that have bumblebees. Um, I was thinking of that for a theme. And I have some coarse alumina to add texture. You've probably seen me add black mica or um, a different version of iron oxide. But this time I decided to go with the alumina to see what is that like. And so I get my palette knife out and just scrape some of that out onto my gel plate. And I don't bother. um, Well, I actually did bother to clean off my brayer this time because there were still some mica flakes on there. So with a clean brayer, I come back and I mix up lamp black. That's a really great Holbein color that is my go to black. And then I'm mixing it up with the coarse alumina. And then I'm taking um, my second stencil and adding it on top of my first round of layers. And I'm very curious to know what this texture is like, because that's the first time I've used that coarse alumina. 
and um, I I don't know what to expect. So um, it's exciting, of course, to get that reveal. Oops, I didn't get the best uh, pull through there. So the nice thing is if you hold your paper with one hand and then take a peek with your other hand, then it pretty much stays in place. And that makes it a little bit easier when you do uh, take that time to pull up your print to see if you got good coverage. All right. Okay, so decent texture here. And there was a wet spot on my stencil. You can see it on the lower left. And that caused my um, print to be a little bit runnier in that spot, which actually turned out to be very cool. I like a loose look and sometimes I will intentionally gel press with wet stencils because I totally dig the way it looks. However, I was not trying to stain my next print in that spot. So I'm here I'm trying to clean it up a little bit. Um, but eventually I just give up and, and move on. Um, so I'll continue here to try to get some more prints. Um, I did not pull the shadow print instead of doing that. I added more black to the plate and I'm going at it again through the stencil like I did the first time around because first of all, I had enough black left over on my brayer that I could spread it out pretty evenly. And second of all, that's a lot of black paint under there. So I really just wanted was not ready to cover an entire print with that. And I'm still not. So I'm just adding more black, lamp black. And there's enough of the coarse Illumina texture left over um, on the plate that I don't even bother to add more because there that was really gritty texture. So I'm just taking more of my prints and pushing them down into the Dorothy stencil so that I can get some more layers of polka dots on top of my print. And that's super fun to do. And I can see these being really great backgrounds for um, something like a bee theme or some sort of fun celebratory theme because they're fun. And I feel like the colors are, are great, can, are very versatile. I could use them for uh, really anybody. So I'll just keep at it. If I have enough paint left on my brayer, I will smooth it back out onto my gel press rather than having to add more. That's one of the great things about um, about gel printing and using the brayers that you, it seems like you're using a ton of paint, but you're really not, which is why you always see me using my nice paints. I use expensive paint when I gel print. A lot of people don't. A lot of people will use um, economy brands or student brands of your paints. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, especially if you're experimenting and not feeling too confident about it. Um, however, I have found that I like the colors and the texture of what I'm getting from my nicer brands like Holbein and Golden so much better than when I use um, student brands or economy brands that you could get, you know, at a big box store. And so um, if you have expensive paints and mediums, I encourage you to use them. I know that you have a ton of art supplies that you will never ever use up. And so you should experiment and have a ton of fun using them on your gel print because you actually go through a lot less paint than you might think, um, especially when you use some of those tips and tricks that I was showing you here, like rolling your brayer, the paint that's left on your brayer, don't roll it out off to the side, just set your brayer down and then you can get the rest of the paint that's left over and smooth it onto your press for your next print. So I'm getting a lot out of it. So these layers are looking great and you can see the subtle differences between the three yellowish oranges that I used. Um, now I'm being brave and I'm picking up a lot of that black paint that was left over and the Red Baron's helping me push down the multimedia paper, mixed media paper. So that background's pretty cool, a little bit more monotone and then I let that paint dry. Um, I know I'm going to be done for now. So I did go ahead and clean off my brayer again and I did some cleaning and now I'm just taking a really thin layer of white acrylic paint. And for that, I will use my cheap stuff, my basics. Um, and so then I'm going to just smooth it out and the first layer of black paint is dry and then the layer of white paint is thin. That, those are your keys to success. And so now I'm pulling that up and it has some cool shimmer to it. It looks really awesome and I just love the cleanup prints. So there are all of the prints that I made from this session and I hope that you enjoyed. 
I'm going to get to my favorite part of cutting them, cutting them down. I just kind of take the edges and line them up and cut off, um, you know, the overlap because sometimes I don't line up the stencils perfectly to from each layer from one layer to the next. So i um, getting to line it up helps give me a better view, kind of like a viewfinder of how the print really looks and gets my imagination going for what I might use that print for in the future. So again, I hope that you have enjoyed this session and I encourage you to experiment um, with different shades and to experiment with different textures and there's the one that got wet. Looks really cool over there, I think. I might have to do a different session with wet stencils just to show you all how awesome they can be. But yeah, so use your supplies. And if you have expensive supplies that you never touch, they are not doing you any good in the cabinet. So break them out and experiment on your gel press. You can see how nice that texture looks. And that one looks really neat and spooky. And I got some good shimmer on that last one. Very good. I hope you all have a great day. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.